Happy hump day, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you for coming over to the DFS five pack to talk a little NBA DFS on Wednesday, the 3rd of March. Um, this can only be described as a big wild slate. Yeah, uh, I think you could use a couple other words to describe it, but we'll leave this G rated and call it, you know, wild, like you mentioned. Wet and wild. All right. Hope everybody had a good night last night. Hopefully, nobody else made a last-minute pivot to Bam because they needed to get quickly in their lineup because uh, that was the worst game I've seen from Bam out of Bayou in, I mean, maybe ever. Yeah, definitely probably happy the All-Star breaks here. Yeah, for sure. That was, that was awful. Miami was terrible. A bunch of teams just played terrible basketball last night. So uh, we were kind of talking about this to start out the members-only video. You know, if you're looking to get weird with it tonight and get different, that could be something to keep in the back of your mind. I'm not saying it works out that way tonight, but there's going to be some real chalky plays and check out your back to backs and don't be surprised if things get a little weird. A lot of these dudes are ready to take a break right now. And the real life comparison I can give is like, you know, when you're about to bounce and go on vacation, that last day or two of work, uh, how crappy you might be as an employee from time to time. Yeah. Or school, whatever it might be. Every, these guys are human beings. So Expect some weirdness. Yeah, it could definitely happen tonight, guys. Don't forget to take a look at our good friends over at Jazz Sportsbook. It is jazzsports.ag. If you use the promo code when signing up of Five Pack, hit me up. Let me know that you did so after making that first deposit. They'll get you a free Five Pack membership. They got same day payouts, uh, low rollover bonus, and they've been around for over 20 years, so it can be a trusted sports trusted source for your sports betting. And during the All-Star break, we will officially be raising the prices for monthly customers. All current monthly customers and anybody that signs up over the next couple of days, this is the last of it, you can keep that price for as long as you want it. It is yours. Uh, so this is a great time to take advantage, and I will give you 20 off your first month. And you will be reared up and ready to go when we get double sports here in a month from now. Let's get it, man. All right. So first things first, let's talk about some major, major chalk of the day. Cover boy, Horton Tucker of the Los Angeles Lakers. So by now, most of you guys know what's going on with Los Angeles. One, they start the day in a great matchup with one of the best teams to target, the Sacramento Kings. Next up, uh, Anthony Davis hasn't played in a hot minute, and now the King, LeBron James, will not be playing for the Los Angeles Lakers tonight, which opens up a ton of usage, shots, rebounds, uh, assists, time with the ball. You name it, it's extra tonight because LeBron James is a ball-dominant player, as everybody knows. Horton Tucker will be popular under all scenarios tonight, but he'll be even bigger and more popular if Kuzma and or Caruso are out. Uh, it is really difficult not to play him. My best argument for not playing him is he's going to be overwhelming chalk, and it's possible the Lakers get weird with that. I will have Horton Tucker in probably every lineup I have, but at the end of the day, my only argument could be, well, maybe the Lakers still only play him 20 minutes, which in my mind, like he'll probably still get you 20 DK points, but there might be better chalk guys. That's like the only argument I have against them. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, listen, our missing LeBron tonight, no Anthony Davis, which is a guy like we're not even talking about here. Maybe no Kuzma. Caruso might be out. This team's real Gasol. short. Gasol might be out. This team is really shorthanded in a crush spot against the Kings. I expect a good effort from these secondary Laker pieces today, missing their two best players, potentially more. 3,400. He's got 10x upside if he plays 25 minutes easily. Uh, I would take 30 plus over less than 15 all day, assuming he plays 50, 20 minutes. So, yeah, he just makes too much sense in all formats. I can find plenty of other guys to get different with. If all of a sudden we hear Caruso, Kuzma, and Gasol are all playing tonight, then I think it's a lot easier to try to. He'll still be very popular, but it'd be easier to get away with him. If all those guys are out, then I think it's about the biggest definition of free square I've ever seen. For sure. All right, next up, you want to talk about your boy, Dame Dollar. Uh, yeah, man. So, again, we talked about it. There's a ton of good plays on this slate. I think that because of that, you're going to see especially, specifically guards, the high-end guards, a little bit lower on than they should. These guys have met up before, before the All-Star game, and both Dame and Steph have gone off. And while I'm not using them because of that, it's a really good spot for both of them to go off here. You've got both teams that give it up to guards. Who's stopping Dame from the Golden State side and vice versa? Who's talking? Who's stopping Steph from the Portland side? No one on either side. I think both of them have big time upside. If I'm forced to choose one, it's Dame. I just think he's more needed for this Portland team right now, missing LaCalle and missing Nurkic. 
finally got off the schneid after a four-game losing streak with a win over Charlotte. I like them to continue the momentum here. And either way, I think this game's close, which is all that matters. So I think both those guys are sneaky here with Dame being the guy I prefer. How about you? So uh, I think you mentioned the game being close, and I have no reason to think otherwise. And After the games last night, and something that we kind of mentioned earlier is there's going to be some weird results tonight. Uh, it really did. You did get the vibe from a few teams last night. Some people were trying to close strong before leaving on vacation. You know that dude that leaves on vacation that works until like an hour later because he doesn't want to come back with a lot to do? And then the other guy that like is trying to skate out of the office at noon because he just doesn't want to be there anymore? There's going to be some weird results tonight for similar reasons like that. But I'm with you. I expect this game to be close. And I think that's a really key thing to hone in on tonight. Yeah, for sure. No doubt about that. Okay, next up, uh, the guy that I struggle to get against. So you guys have heard me and you and me and other people go on and on about this stuff for years. you know. And I am a firm believer, whether I'm right or wrong, that narratives are mostly made up stuff by the media. I love this one, though. And I love it a lot. I will oftentimes like take the counter argument that the opposing team has every reason to try to stop this player as well. The big difference here is like James Harden is really, really good. And the Rockets right now are like the Baltimore Orioles of the NBA. And they can't stop anybody. Your boy Colin Sexton looked like the second coming of Michael Jordan the other night. They just couldn't do anything to stop him. He did whatever he wanted. They just don't have very good players, uh, you know, offensively, defensively. And while I'm a little worried about Brooklyn getting up big on the Houston Rockets right here, a very, 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 very important key for me about James Harden is there's no game for the Nets tomorrow. So there's no, like, big game against the Celtics or the Bucks tomorrow that they're going to save him for. Like, unless they're up 50, I think Harden is out there, you know, and his teammates are letting him boogie. I think he's shooting a few extra step-back threes tonight. He's already proved that he's one of the best passers in the game, so he gets his teammates involved. The Rockets are atrocious defensively. I think he's giving you a minimum of 50 tonight with, like, legit 75-point upside here. Yeah, he looks really good here, man. Going on against his old team, team that has no chance of stopping him in this spot. Again, if Houston gets up 50, it's easy that he has 50 DK points by half. The floor is real. The ceiling's real. It's hard not to lock in Harden here. And with so many good spots, he might not get as much love as, as he deserves. So, yeah, I mean, if you're making one lineup tonight, multi-entering, it's hard not to just lock Harden in and, you know, go from there. Uh Man, the upside's real. I mentioned it to you. I played him the other day against the Spurs, and it seemed like he wasn't even very good, and he walked into 80 DK points. So, yeah, uh, fade at your own risk, I'll say that. So a lot of times you guys will hear me on this show that if Matt likes chalk, because you are the, one of the biggest proponents of fading chalk, that you're going to find, as far as people who talk DFS consistently, that it should tell you something, right? That like if you're big on a chalk play, it should mean that this is a pretty darn good play most of the time. Even if it doesn't work out, it makes all the sense in the world. Well, I'm kind of like the flip side of that with like guys going back to their old teams. doesn't really often mean a lot for me. But if I like it, it should at least mean something to you guys that it's very, very logical. Now, it's possible he plays poorly. Anything is possible. But this is probably about as excited for a narrative play as I've ever had in my entire life of uh, talking about DFS. I think he's got a little extra pep in his step today for a guy who's already really good and doesn't even really need it. Yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, he, this guy can ball, no doubt about it. I was a little hard on him when he put on a few pounds, and I didn't like the way he got his way out of town, but he's been phenomenal for the Nets, and I actually have him on my MVP list. Maybe not gotten there quite yet, but the way that he's played since coming to Brooklyn, uh, he's been impressive, and uh, I eat a little crow for being a little hard on him earlier in the season. The problem with saying calling him MVP is like, what about the first few weeks of the season? It's difficult. And, it, and a different year when somebody was running away from it, it would be really difficult for him to get there. And he won't win it for the same reasons like that Giannis won't win it, right? Like the narrative just does not play out well for him in that situation. But it doesn't mean that he doesn't at least deserve to be discussed. No doubt about it. All right. So let's move over to long shots and let's talk about the Toronto Raptors, or which are one of the teams that's going to get a ton of attention today. Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet. Uh, original gangster Ananobi, none of these guys are going to be playing today. So this does open up a lot of value with the Toronto Raptors. The guys get in love. Bembry, Lowry, Chris Boucher, or Boucher as we might want to call him, Davis. These guys are all getting some attention. I like taking a look at some of the other players. Uh, for example, uh, Watanabe, or I never remember how to pronounce his name correctly. 3,100, 
available at the power forward position. Um, I saw him the other day. It sounds like he's finally recovered from Anthony Edwards' dunk of the year on top of him. So maybe today he wants to take out a little bit of that aggression. Currently projected for single-digit ownership. There's a bunch of lesser-known guys on the Raptors that are going to be forced into playing minutes today, and they're playing an inferior opponent in the Detroit Pistons. Uh, they also play tomorrow. So if this game gets a little weird with it one way or the other, however that works out, you could see some of these lesser-known guys getting actually a few extra minutes. No doubt. I mean, really shorthanded. Everyone in Toronto is in play, and you're not going to see him get a lot of love. Well, he's not a very good DFS player, but minutes are are minutes are gold as far as DFS points go, and you could see him playing a bunch here. Again, far from like a lock, but I get it as a long shot, especially at 3,100. I mean, it's hard for these guys to really burn you unless they like don't play, and he's going to play. So here's my big thing about him. Uh, Bembry is going to be like five times more owned than he is. He's yep. no worse at DFS than Bembry, probably. He's probably a little worse than Bembry, but Bembry's not very good. Right? Like, I think the most logical thing here is, like, Lowry is, is a monster if the Raptors play well, right? Like, he's going to have to do a lot. Norman Powell's obviously, you know, a decent player and stuff like that. Boucher's got his moments. But, you know, yeah, guys like Davis that will get some love. I like the idea. You know, it could be Stanley Johnson or Aaron Bay. It's a couple of cheaper Raptors I was looking at. So, you know, you make your choices on this one. But we've seen some weird results in the NBA this year. If this game gets weird, and knowing that I think the Raptors play the Celtics tomorrow, they're going to probably going to save Kyle Lowry and Norman Powell for that game. Like, let's just say the Pistons play terrible, which they're fully capable of. Some of these Raptors guys can be kind of sneaky. For sure. No doubt about that. All right. Next up. So... We've mentioned it a few times this year. Long shot can mean a couple of different things. There's a couple of studs. We've brought up two of them. They're both going to get more love than this guy, Nikola Vucevic, who seems way too expensive at 10-3, but he's going to be single-digit owned more than likely. Uh, and he's got to do a lot for the Orlando team right now. That's still, you know, obviously Markel Fultz is out but for a long time. Aaron Gordon's out. We haven't seen Jonathan Isaac in 35 years now. Evan Fournio may not play tonight. Cole Anthony out. I mean, Vooch is by far the best player on Orlando right now. You look at it like with 40 out and all these other guys out, other guys out, there might not be a bigger uh, drop from like best player to next best player than Vooch in the league. Especially with, with 40 out, right? Right, yeah. Like, I mean, it, Vooch isn't like a, a superstar, but he's an all-star level player. And, you know, he's playing with a bunch of guys that frankly shouldn't be starting. Um so he's needed to do a ton. I view this as a winnable game for both sides, though. You got Orlando at home, Atlanta off a of back-to-back. Kind of like I talked about with Dame and Steph. I also like the idea of running Vooch and Trey Young in this spot at very, you know, even lower ownership than the other two guys. You mentioned you mentioned it. Vooch is expensive. So while he doesn't get upside all the time, we've talked about him a lot. Without these other guys in a good spot against Atlanta, the upside's real. The last time I liked him was... A week ago, he had a monster game. I feel good about him. I think he comes in under 5% owned. And you mentioned it. I love the third bullet point. Like, he is too pricey and there's sticker shock there. But without Orlando having their normal guys, like, the upside's real there right now. And I like him better if Fournier's, Fournier is out, as you mentioned. I just think the ownership and you can, you know, this is one you talk about Horton Tucker and all these other, you know, chalky, cheaper guys. You play a guy like Vucevic, you're already different. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, we talked about a few of these guys throughout the members only video. Like, and I love the longer discussion we had the other day that you don't need to be that different. No, you know what I mean. Like, if you have Horton Tucker I mean, at seventy five percent owned, okay. But what if Vucevic is just like the one guy you have that's low owned, and he does go for sixty five plus, which we've seen multiple occasions lately. Yeah, I mean, look at like John Morant last night. I mean, it's not always going to be like that. Obviously, chalk guys will fail, and some failed last night, but. You have to pick your spots. Uh, I really liked John Morant last night. I played him. So, I mean, uh, I think tonight they're cheap. There are chalky guys that I also like, and maybe I'll just get a little bit weirder with my studs, like a Vucevic. I love that. We talked about this for a long time the other day. Morant was uber chalk last night, but he was supposed to be. He should be, and he balled. You weren't winning without John Morant last night. The, you know, the idea of looking at low-owned guys – I mean, it's fun, and it's a, it's a nice discussion to have, and there's definitely low on guys that can succeed. But sometimes a guy's popular because he deserves to be popular, and you weren't winning any money without John Morant last night. And Horton Tucker could be like that today. But you find one guy like Vucevic who's not super common, and that could be all you need to get to the mountaintop. No doubt about it. So uh, what did Morant end with last night, like 56? 58. 
58. Yeah, he was – he closed hard, too. Like, he was good. And then all, all of a sudden, when I thought there was a chance they might take those guys out, I looked up. And, I mean, he went from, like, mid-40s to mid-50s like that. He was yeah, awesome. Yeah, he closed hard. Real hard. He, he was ABC. Like, the double-double late. Like, he closed real hard. I thought they might take those guys out. I know you had a bunch of them. I had a bunch of exposure to some of the, you know, the Memphis and the, uh, of the Washington guys as well. It's always nice when the coach lets them run a little bit deeper. The flip side of that, too, is, like, if you watch the Nuggets, Milwaukee, like, Milwaukee couldn't make a shot last night. The Nuggets hit everything with a hand in their face. Milwaukee couldn't hit an open three to save their life. At the end of the game, they pulled Giannis and Middleton and Brooke Lopez and all those guys. But, like, Jamal Murray, MPJ, and Jokic were out there for, like, another three minutes, and Jokic got his triple-double. Uh, like, he threw up another six, seven points when you thought he was coming out. For sure. So, um, it's nice when coaches do that for you. It sucks when they do that for the guys you're playing against. Uh, yes, it does. No doubt about that. <laughs> All right, guys, don't forget to click the thumbs up button. We appreciate y'all watching us today. Best of luck tonight, and we will see you guys later. Thanks, guys.